Jason Young represented the United States in London this past summer. The Olympian sits down with us. Texas Tech soccer dominated the pitch in its first home match in nearly a month, while Red Raider volleyball struggled in their Big 12 home opener. And the Texas Tech offense has rolled in the first three games of the season, and offensive coordinator Neil Brown shares why the offense has been firing on all cylinders so far. And what plays got into the top three of the week? That and more coming up next. It's the Double T Insider. Let's go. There, and that one goes in. Texas Tech takes the 2-0 lead. How's it going, everyone? I'm Joshua Cook, joined by Robert Giovanetti to bring you yet another installment of the Double T Insider. We kick off this week with Red Raider soccer. The Red Raiders pounded the ball into the back of the net. Now one, two, or three times, but five times as four different Tech players netted goals against New Mexico State in a dominating five-to-nothing victory on Sunday, improving Tech's record to eight and three in 2012. On the hardwood, the Red Raider volleyball team returned home following a seven-match road swing and opening Big 12 conference play against the Jayhawks on Saturday inside the USA. Marking the first time in the Big 12 era that the Red Raiders and Jayhawks have met to open conference play. But it was all Kansas on Saturday as the Red Raiders fell 3-0, falling to 11-5 on the season. In other news, Texas Tech men's basketball head coach Billy Gillespie resigned late last week following multiple trips to the hospital and the Mayo Clinic to treat stress and high blood pressure. Gillespie lasted only one season at the helm of the Red Raider basketball program. Here's a statement from Texas Tech Athletic Director Kirby Hocutt. Billy has decided to focus on his health and we wish him a full recovery. We are proud of the young men that he has brought to this campus. Billy's decision allows him to concentrate on his well-being and allows us to turn our attention to preparations for the upcoming season. Associate Head Coach Chris Walker will continue to handle the day-to-day -day operations of the men's basketball program until an interim head coach for the 2012-2013 season is named. The Red Raider soccer team has experienced some success early in 2012 thanks to a number of standout players, including one freshman who's opened up some eyes not only in the Big 12, but around the country. Erica Taylor has more. A freshman forward from Highland Ranch, Colorado, number 12, Janine Becky. It's safe to say forward Janine Becky is a lethal weapon against opponents on the field for Red Raider soccer. She's been named Under Armour Invitational MVP, All-Tournament Team, and Big 12 Newcomer of the Week. Halfway through her freshman season, Becky is already making a name for herself. I think it's just been pure excitement. I think um, coming in here and making an impact like I wanted to has um, made it the transition easier, but also made the season so much fun for me and I think for my teammates. Becky's athletic ability comes as no surprise for head coach Tom Stone. The 5A forward is loaded with speed, quick enough to keep any defender on their toes. She's just so fast, you know, that's the thing you can't really prepare. I mean, you can prepare for it tactically. You can do some things to drop off and not give that room behind you. But at the same time, at some point, your player is matched up against her. And if, if Janine's faster, she's just faster. You know, speed kills, in, in certainly in women's soccer. Becky leads Red Raider soccer in goals scored this season and is among the top five scorers in the Big 12 Conference. With already seven goals in her career, she hasn't shied away from the challenge. Well, I mean, I've said it before, as a forward, my job's to score. So I think that I've taken that well and I've um, come out in games that we need to do well in and I've put the ball in the back of the net. She's looking to keep adding to those numbers as the Red Raiders face Oklahoma and Iowa State this weekend at the John B. Walker Soccer Complex. For Double T Insider, I'm Erica Taylor. Coming up next, we talk to a Red Raider who had a trip this summer he will never forget. And later, the Red Raider offense has been rolling this season. We sit down with Tech Offensive Coordinator Neil Brown. But first, let's hit the rewind button and take a look back on the week that was for Texas Tech Athletics. <laughs> Nothing, most goals scored on the season for the Red Raiders in a single game. 
Welcome back, everyone. Well, the Summer Olympics included athletes from all around the globe, including one athlete who made the trip to London from Lubbock. Blake Silverthorne has the story. After failing to make the Beijing Olympic Games in 2008, former Red Raider Jason Young did not give up. That effort of just sticking with it. Uh, 08 he did. He had some injuries in 08, and then uh, to see him uh, just to stay with it. Uh, you know, he's married, he's got a baby. Uh, the opportunity in our world track and field, you don't make near as much money as you do in football or basketball. And I think for him to just be able to survive and for him to be able to keep those goals high and to have that dream of making Olympic. But rather continued pursuing his dream of one day being an Olympian. This past summer, that dream came true in London fashion. Being an Olympian is, is an amazing experience because it's something that uh, once you do, you know, you can't have taken away from you. Uh, it's something that you have, uh, you know, set next to your name for the rest of your life. Uh, I prepared, I mean, it's been, geez, 15 years, I guess, preparing to get to that moment, so it was really sweet. Young was one of seven former Red Raiders competing in the 2012 London Olympics. With the games all the way in London, it was hard to get his family there, but with the help of the Lubbock community, he was able to get one very important person in his life to watch him from the stands in London, his wife. My wife was a discus thrower at Texas Tech as well. That's where we met. We went to school together. We were friends. And then, you know, so on and so on. So she understands almost more than anybody, you know, everything I've been through, what it actually takes to be able to be good at it. And then, uh, you know, it was just a, it was just a, a thing that uh, it had to be done, you know. It just had to be done because she was the most important person to be there to watch me. Young definitely hopes this is not his last games to participate in, but he does take a lot of memories away from London. Hopefully this isn't my last game. <laughs> Hopefully I get another one and at that, at that next one, I think my son will be about six years old and hopefully he'll be able to remember that. But as far as a special thing about the actual games, I don't know, I guess it'd have to be, you know, walking in the opening ceremony looking around and looking at all the great athletes of the world being right there next to you and everybody's on the same level everybody's on the same tier representing the same country so you know when you're bumping elbows with uh, LeBron James and Kobe Bryant and people like that it shows you something you're the elite you're the top in the world and uh, that's something that a lot of people never get to do. For the Double T Insider I'm Blake Silverthorne. come back, we sit down with the man behind the high-flying Red Ritter offense. And don't go anywhere, the top plays of the week are coming up later. Welcome back everyone. The Texas Tech football team has not had a problem scoring points this season so far behind the offense led by senior quarterback Seth Dagey. And Neil Brown is very happy with where this offense is entering Big 12 play. Yeah, we're off to a good start. You know, that, um, through three weeks, we're kind of where we needed to be, where we should be. Uh, I think this next week will kind of tell the story kind of where we're at. Uh, I've been pleased with how our kids have practiced and how they've prepared. Um, you know, I thought our backups getting to play a lot early has, has really been beneficial also. Faith played at a really high level our last two ball games. Uh, he's just a lot more confident. Um, than he, than he was last year. Um, and, it's, and it goes back to, I think, always from year one to year two, regardless of what the age of the quarterback is, from year one to year two, there's always tremendous growth. Um, you know, he's not seeing new things. You know, he's more comfortable in the offense. Uh, he's more comfortable with his, with his leadership position, his role on the team. And I think that all carries over into Saturdays, just feeling more confident, more comfortable uh, with his surroundings. Well, I think it all starts with our leadership. You know, we've got Seth at quarterback, who's a senior. We've got three uh, senior O-linemen up front that have, that have really done a great job in a leadership role. And then Eric Stevens also. And then we've got several uh, receivers that with, with, with a lot of experience. You know, Alex Torres, Austin Duzalek, guys like that. And I think what you're seeing is you're seeing the benefits of leadership. You know, 
our younger guys. We're playing quite a few, quite a few younger guys, but they've got good role models, good guys that are that are kind of leading the way, and that and that's that's making us more confident, and we're uh, we're preparing better. You know, I think it it all comes a lot of that comes with age. Yeah, it's good. It's good. You know, we've we've really spent I guess the last three years really recruiting to get that depth. Um, I, we've got a lot of competition at those at those four spots, and what that's done is that competition. You know, they can't take a day off because if they take a day off, if they don't practice very well, uh, if they have stuff that happens off off the field, then you know the next guy moves up, and there's not any noticeable difference. And that competition in practice has, has led because you know. O linemen and, and 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 running backs and those type of guys they always come to work every day. Receivers are a little bit up and down, but that hasn't been the case this year. We've had the probably the most spirited, the most competitive practices that we've had since I've been here. Um, and, it, and it's a luxury. It's a luxury because like Marcus Kennard missed last week. You know we just moved another wide out in. He played. Eric Ward missed the second game. Moved another guy in. He played. We had a couple of receivers that didn't play. Darren Moore, Javon Bell didn't play the first week. Hey, another moving another guy up. So that, that's that's a that's a really a, a good thing to have because there's always going to be injuries when you're playing a 12 game season. Uh, it, we've been we've been more balanced first three games than we have probably any at any point during the three years I've been here. Uh, those guys have done a good job. I thought they played really well against New Mexico. That was their best game by far. Uh, we've really harped on those guys making people miss on the second level. I thought they did a lot better job of that against New Mexico. Um, you know, it's almost, it's almost the carries have almost been split a third, a third, and third between Sedell and Kenny and uh, Eric so far. You know, I don't know if that'll continue in league play. You know, because we've really only played a half for three, the three games, because the game's basically been over at halftime. Um, you know, we'll 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 ride the hot guy probably a little bit more uh, in conference games than we have so far. So if, if Kenny gets off to a great start and Hey, he's playing well. We'll go with him. If Eric or Sadell does the same, we'll play. We'll play with them. We and we we used it to our to our advantage. Um, we spent a lot of time on Iowa State last week, uh, but we also during the bye week we spent a lot of time on ourselves because we've got a lot of room to get better. You know, there's the things technique wise and assignment wise that we really need to work on. And I thought we got that done. Uh, we've got a good plan against Iowa State. We just we need to go out and execute it. We, we, the three things we talk about all the time is we got to play at a fast tempo. We got to play hard. That means just you know playing all out, and we got to play physical. We got to carry those things into conference play. Non-conference wise, I was very pleased. I thought we played really at a good tempo. I thought our kids played super hard. And I thought we were physical. And we've got to carry that into conference play, and it starts at Iowa State. You know, in at Iowa State, probably the most important thing is we've got to be physical. They're a physical football team, and we've got to match or exceed those. And then the other thing is we've made some some technique errors. We've had some mental mistakes in the non-conference that didn't get exposed. Uh, but those, if we continue to to make those technique errors, to to make mental mistakes, those will get exposed in conference play. Well, I think we got the pieces. You know, I think the next few weeks will tell. You know, we get in, we get into conference play. Um, the thing that I've, I've been pleased with in our non-conference is, is they've taken care of business. You know, when they've taken the field, they've been ready to play three games in a row. And I think we got the pieces. We're, we're talented enough uh, at quarterback and running back and receiver. Our, our first group of O linemen is, is definitely good enough. We're a little thin up there. You know, you know, we can't, we we can't. We don't have enough depth up front to withstand a whole lot of injuries, so that's going to be a that's going to be a factor as we go along. But skill-wise, we definitely have the pieces to be to be very good. You know, I think it's a little early to tell if we're there yet. I think you know we play Iowa State and then Oklahoma and West Virginia. You know, we're going to know pretty soon. When we come back, the Red Raiders are ready to give some payback to a team that's beaten them the last two seasons. 
And we take a look at the week ahead for Tech Athletics. Don't go anywhere. The Double T Insider is back after this. Welcome back, everyone. The Texas Tech football team was off last week, but the Red Raiders are now ready to hit the road to face Iowa State to open up Big 12 play. It'll be a challenge for us defensively. We played pretty well, but this is the type of team that we'll start facing each week. So it's time to get going to see where we're really at defensively against a team that can run and throw the football. Well, I mean, uh, it doesn't stop there. Uh, first three games to us, those were like just kind of uh, glorified scrimmages more so. You know, we were we were still feeling each other, feeling ourselves out, and this is going to be the first real challenge that we've had, you know, first game in the Big 12. And so uh, it, it really starts here. I it's not going to be uh, go play two quarters and then get taken out. It's going to be a, a four-quarter game. and um, They're a very physical team. It's going to be loud. Um, you're going to – not many people are going to be there cheering you on. So, I mean, you just got to mentally and physically be, be ready to roll. they got to go on on the road and play in a hostile environment and – and, and see, not trust those guys. You know, I think Raven Clark's played exceptionally well through two, uh, three, three games. Alfredo's getting better. He, he and Bo are getting better every week. Um, but it's definitely going to be their stiffest challenge. I mean, I don't think there's any question about that. As a defense, we feel like this will be the game that we really make a statement. We, you know, a lot of people felt like, well, some people felt like we made statements those last three games. But uh, this game will really be the, the game that we'll make that statement. Be any excuses from anybody. Uh, you know, we've had a week off. We're healthy. They're healthy. Uh, I think the best team will win. I don't know whether we're that to that point or not. With the show winding down, let's give you a preview of what's coming up for the Red Raiders this week. Red Raider soccer continues its four-match homestand as the Oklahoma Sooners roll into Lubbock on Friday to open the home portion of the Big 12 play for Texas Tech. First kick is set for 7 p.m. And on Sunday, Tech turns around and plays Iowa State at 1 p.m. at the John B. Walker Soccer Complex to close out the weekend. Texas Tech Volleyball, after traveling to TCU on Wednesday, is back home on Saturday to face the nationally ranked Texas Longhorns. First serve set for 2 p.m., and you can hear live play-by-play -play on both of these matches on KTXT The Raiders, 88.1 FM. We are almost out of time on the show. With that, we bring you the top three plays of the week. At number three, Niera Cave recovering from an injury from last season. The senior looking fully healthy here as she throws this ball down with force. Another look as the Red Raiders would fall though, three to nothing. At number two in the 72nd minute, Janine Becky continuing her hot play as she finds the back of the net, her team high seventh goal of the season. At number one, Paige Strahan had herself a game on Sunday and she would not score just once, but twice. Both goals coming in the first half. First career multi-goal performance in the Red Raiders' role in this one, beating New Mexico State 5-0. Well, we're out of time, but thanks for watching. And be sure to tune in next week. Also, go like our Facebook page, search for Double T Insider, and never miss another episode. That does it for us. For Robert Giovanetti, I'm Joshua Cook. Have a great weekend, everyone.